Hello, I'm Eric, a sales rep here at Atlantic British. Uh, today we're going to talk about building up a Discovery 2 into an off-road vehicle. They've gotten really affordable now. You can pick up a D2 for $3,500 to $5,000, put three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in it, and have a very good off-road vehicle. Um, this one we picked up a couple years ago. We've been driving it around. We've used it as a test mule, so now we're going to build it up into an off-road truck. With Doug's help, we're going to put suspension, front and rear bumpers, and then slowly build it up into a lifestyle truck. We'll have videos um, that'll show Doug doing each process, and we'll post those as time goes on. This truck's in good shape. It's very straight for the year, and we've had it for a few years, as I said. So stay tuned, and we'll have more information as time goes on. I'm Doug, your tech support representative here in Atlanta, British. Welcome back to Project D2. This is the next step where we're installing the steel bumpers. This is to give the vehicle a little more clearance in the front and back for off-road use. You'll notice we have the steel bumper, which already has the cutout for a winch if you plan on adding a winch to the vehicle. This is a, a DA 5645. It's a relatively easy installation, depending on your, uh, your expertise in mechanical uh, installations. You can do this job 45 minutes to maybe two hours max, with, even with rusty nuts and bolts. It's a relatively easy installation, and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so our first step in re removing this front bumper and the cover is going to be six Phillips screws for this front panel, and then two 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom. You have the same thing on the other side. We're going to get those out, and then we're going to show you there's the two electrical connections. If you have fog lights on your D2, you're going to need to disconnect the wiring on that. We'll show you that in a few minutes. And then there are four nuts. Uh, inside the 13 millimeter that hold the bumper assembly onto the front frame horns. All right. Now that we've taken the panel out, now something I'll note, mention to you real quickly, there's a 90 degree bracket on the bottom where we showed the two 10 millimeter nuts. If they're really rusted in place and you can't get them out, there are two Phillips screws that run up from the bottom that run into the same bracket. And you can remove that bracket by just taking those two Phillips screws out. So you can do it either way. Next what we have now, this vehicle is equipped with fog lights. What we have right here is a wire tie that's locking in the vent for the fog light and the actual delivery line for the washers. And we're going to snip that off, get that out of the way. And we're going to disconnect this line and we'll show you what to do with that after we get the new bumper in place. But just to get the old one off, we're going to remove that get that out of place. Now your electrical connector for the fog light, you're going to follow the wire up and you see this white connector up here in the upper fender. There's a little white tab right here that you're going to lift up and slide that out. Then you can get to the tab you need to depress to pull the electrical connection. And we'll pull that down through there so that don't get caught up on anything while we're, when we're lifting the bumper off. Okay, so we've got that and the vent. Okay, so we get that off, and then we're simply going to do that same process on the other side to get that all disconnected, and then what we're going to raise this up to show you where the four bolts are that hold the bumper in place. So now we've removed this panel like we did on the other side. We've taken the screws out. We've disconnected the lines, the vents, the electrical connection. The next step is to take the nuts off these two studs right here. And there are identical two on the other side. Once you take those off, this bumper is ready to slide off. All right, one last thing to mention because some of these, you got the SD models, SC models, SC7. Some of these have a stud that comes through and holds the corners of the bumper against these brackets. Fortunately, it's a slotted hole, so you don't need to take the nut out all the way, but at least back it off about four or five turns, loose enough, on both sides, and then you should be able to slide the bumper right out of the front of the vehicle. And last but not least, we're able to pull the bumper away and lower it down. The last obstacle we have is that this vehicle is equipped with 
headlight washers, which means you have another motor up in front of the tank that drives this hose that supplies, which we've disconnected at both ends earlier, but we need to disconnect from the motor. Now, if you just disconnect it, what you're going to see by the way this is mounted, that you're going to lose all the fluid out of your tank. Plus, you lose your windshield washers for front and back. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip this hose and then insert a uh, eight millimeter bolt inside the hose and then clamp that because should you accidentally hit the switch inside just a regular cap or a cover will blow right off and then you lose all the fluid so we're gonna basically put the bolt in there and then put a clamp on there to make that a good solid connection should later on down the line you ever want to put the stock bumper back on you can just simply take the bolt out you can get you get a plastic union that'll join that hose again clamp both sides and you're back in business so we're gonna clip and seal And so we don't lose all our fluid. I'm just going to kind of pinch it off a little bit. Run that bolt in and then we're going to get a small clamp wrap around that and clamp that in place. So as you can see, bumper's off. They really didn't take that long. And what we're going to do now, you can actually tell by looking at the bumper on here that it doesn't have two studs down each side like we just took out of the original. The next step is we're going to remove these horns. Now the only thing really holding these in place are two through bolts that come through the other side. They hold the horn and they hold this bottom support rod. Once we install the bumper, we're no longer going to need this. So this bottom rod comes off, the horns come off, and the bumper is going to mount directly onto the frame rails with the existing bolts that we've just taken off the front horns. All right, now just to show you before we slide the bumper on, you'll see here's your existing frame horns right here. We've taken the crush, the crush cones or the extensions off the aluminum. We're going to use the uh, existing bolts that came out of these two holes and we're just simply going to take the new bumper and I probably recommend you do this with two people to try to support the bumper and run the bolts in might be a little awkward this is an all steel bumper it does have some weight to it and it would be much safer if you did this with two people one on each side slide the top bolt in level it put your bottom bolts in and basically your bumper will be applied and then we'll uh, basically tidy up this area by taking out these vent hoses from up above where they come through so what we've done now is we've got the bumper laid up in place and we've got it in far enough where I can get two of the bolts basically started. But all vehicles are built with intolerances. In other words, not every part on this vehicle is going to sit in the exact same spot as every other vehicle. There's going to be little differences as far as their location. So sometimes we need to do a little trim work. In the case of this, we find that as we're trying to install it, this one section of the bumper is actually hitting this flanged area of the back of the grill. So what we're going to do basically is now that we have this in place, we're going to mark the areas that we need to trim off. Slide the bumper back out. We can do a trim with a hacksaw blade, a fine blade, and a cutoff saw. Be sure you use a fine blade. This is sort of a brittle plastic. You use a rough blade and you could ever end up just breaking it or taking a chunk much bigger than you intended to. So that's what we're going to do with this. We're going to slide this back out. We'll trim off. We're going to mark and trim those areas. we got a little sharpie we can get in there. Give yourself a little bit of extra. Not a lot, but enough so that if you need to move a little bit more than you anticipated, you have the room to do so. we did the trim work we found that we can now raise this up a little bit and get this in place now this particular part number is listed for 03 and 04 which has a little bit different grill design and would give you more clearance but on 99 to 02 you are going to have to cut the corners out of the flange and you may have to trim a little bit off these lower trim panels underneath the headlights other than that it's pretty much we set the thing in place ran the bolts through tighten them up you got two bolts on each side and basically puts the bumper in place. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to add some pull hooks and then you also have the additional holes for the hijack in case you do get this buried in the mud you'll be able to jack it out of there and we're going to show you that in future videos. So for now we got the front bumper on now we're going to show you how to do the back bumper. Alright so here you are in the back of a 02 D2 rear bumper assembly very easy on these is original equipment. Your lights here in the back are held in by nothing more than a little metal clip on one end that you push in, spring clip, and the other end is 
a tab that locks it in place. So you squeeze the tip, you push it out. You're going to depress that tab, you disconnect that light. I'm going to do the same to the other side. And then all we have left to get the bumper off are two bolts, one on each side, that run through a metal plate, the backing of the bumper, and into the frame rail itself. Now, I pre-soaked these bolts, so if you have a lot of rust in your area, I do recommend start a couple days ahead of time. Start soaking these bolts down, and I'll tell you, it makes an amazing difference when you go to take them off. Just something I'm going to mention now, I'm going to use a hand wrench to take them off, but once you have the lights out, you can get through here with a long extension, a socket, and an impact gun if you have compressed air, and you can zip those bolts right out. So, now what you're going to notice is when you look at the replacement bumper, we'll move over here. These are your slots where you're going to reuse the two bolts that you just took out. But you have this additional plate right here, and this is going to go between the trailer hitch and the frame using the two existing bolts we have in the hitch. And that's going to be that bolt right there, which is an 18 millimeter head. There's another bolt right on the other side. And to give us a little play to sneak it in, we're going to loosen up the four on the bottom, just a turn or so, just enough so we have a little movement and we can slide that plate in there. All right, so with my uh, helpful assistant here, Eric, we're going to take the bumper, we're going to slide this in place. So the center plate first, we've loosened this, we've moved it so we have a small gap in here so we can slide that in. Take the two bolts, get that set in place, and then we can move it around. We leave these bolts loose for a while until we get the two center bolts in place and started, and then we can lock everything in together. Now I suggest this being done as a two-man operation. You could probably do it as one. But with two men, it's safer, it's easier. This is considerably heavier than the original bumper you just took off. You really don't want this coming down and hitting you in the head. So, there we go. Gotta come my way a little, Doug. So what we've done is we showed we, we showed you basically setting this up in place. This is definitely a two-man operation. Just makes life a lot easier. A long bar like this. If you're going to do any suspension or body work, it's always good to have a small leverage bar. Not everything lines up perfect. A little tweak here, a little push there, and all the bolts come back in place. So now we're at the point we're going to tighten the two center bolts. We're going to run those in, tighten those, tighten the four bottom bolts so the hitch is in and secure. Tighten up the two retainer bolts. And then we'll show you just basically how to run the wiring through and replace the two taillight assemblies. Alright, so we have our bumper up in, locked in, the two retainer bolts in the center, grab that plate. Now you notice when we took the old one out, you didn't have that retainer plate, so now you've got additional support so that this bumper is not only supported from the two outside bolts but through the trailer hitch as well. You've got pull hooks already welded on and then you've also got the openings for hijack to be installed here. So we're going to put our tail lights back on. You notice the contour. This is set up so that you have turn signal outside, brake light inside. There's a hole in the back of the bumper to snake your wiring through. You can reach right up through. And make your connection. Make sure you hear that click. Now you've got two plastic tabs on the side there that are going to hook into this tab right here. And then the snap clip is just going to let you pop this right in place. Push the wiring up to keep that from getting caught on anything. And now the other side. Again, turn signal to the outside, brake light to the inside. Okay. All right, and that's that. Your rear bumper is installed. 
So basically all we need to do at this point, we're going to put the wheels on the vehicle. We're going to also clean up those two of those vent lines that we left hanging up front, which is just we access those from the top and pull them up through and we'll save those in case we ever want to reinstall them back on the vehicle. Okay, now that we've got our bumpers on, everything's locked in place. As I mentioned, if your vehicle had been equipped with the headlight washers, which they actually do give you a cutout on the bumper if we want to reinstall them, but we're not going to put them back on in this case on this vehicle. Underneath your little cover right here that you use to access your headlight bulb, you squeeze these tabs and lift up, and you'll find the top of those breather tubes attached to the inner wall. And we're just going to basically detach and lift one side. And then here's your others. Alright then, now that we have the steel bumpers, both front and rear, the next step is going to be to install the winch. Now we've got a number of different winches available on these vehicles, but the application is all pretty much the same. You're going to find though, because of the design on the, um, on the Disco 2s, we're going to have to take the grill out to mount the winch, and then more likely we're going to be trimming off anywhere from 1 to 2 inches, depending on the winch design, off the bottom of the front grill. So before we even get started, we're going to test fit. We're going to take this grill out. To take the grills off of the Discovery 2s, you have a piece of trim that's underneath the headlights here, and the access screw is actually going to be through the wheel well. Now, in the process of replacing the steel bumper, you've taken those front plates off, which actually gives you better access to those screws. And I'm going to give you the location of those screws, then we're going to take them out. And the reason you need to take these trim panels off is because behind them are two bottom screws that hold the grill in place. So we're going to show you where that screw is, and then we're going to take the two trim pieces out, and then we'll show you how to remove the grill. All right, so if you look all the way up front, you'll see a single screw all by itself way back in here. And that's the retainer screw for that trim panel. So I probably recommend a regular size Phillips screwdriver isn't really going to fit. The handle's going to be in the way. You'll probably want one of these extended screwdrivers with a Phillips tip to be able to get back in there and remove it a lot easier. Alright, so once you've taken those two screws out, we're going to take these covers over the headlights out from underneath the hood. And those you just squeeze the two tabs on each end and lift up. That comes right up and out of there. And that'll expose the screw up on top here that holds the parking light in. We got to pull the, uh, we got to take that parking light assembly out so that we can finish removing the trim panel. Make sure you put your screws where you can find them. And it slides out there. We're going to let that hang. And that pops out of there. So now, you can see the screw on the side of the grill. We're going to take those that bottom screw out, and there's another identical to it on the other side. And then we have three pop rivets, essentially plastic retainer rivets on top. And what we need to do is there are little recesses down inside. More than likely, you need a little flat blade screwdriver. We'll get that up just a little bit, and you can grab it with a pair of dykes, where they actually do make specialty pliers to be able to pull those out. So we'll lift them up and out of there. Show you how to do one, and then you're just going to do the other two remaining in the same way. You'll hear a little pop that lifts, and we get underneath it with the tool, pull that up, and then we pull the grommet base out. And there's your pop rivet. And we'll put that aside as well. So now we're going to take the, we'll do the same on the other side, and we'll have the grill out. All right. So as described, now we've got the grill out of the way. We're going to set the winch in place. Now, these bumpers are pre-drilled. Unfortunately, most winches are have a, basically a universal footprint. So you more than likely will not have to drill through. You've got four bolts already pre-drilled in the bumper itself. These generally will always line up with any of the major manufacturer winches. And then you've also got two pre-drilled holes and your opening in the front. And that'll be for your faceplate that we're going to bolt on after the winch installation. So basically you've got the hardware for the winch, the wiring is pretty basic, we're just going to we'll, uh, end up routing the cables up through behind and alongside the fan up to the battery, 
and then your control is mounted right on the winch itself so you really don't have to have any internal controls and also some winches are available with a remote control which is very handy if you're trying to run a line out to a tree or whatnot you can do it while you're walking away from the unit so each has its different advantages there's different weight levels there's different scale levels it doesn't matter what you need it for so we're going to test fit the winch in place like I said, it's just basically in line with the four bolts, run the bolts up through the bottom, put the face plate on, and then we'll, uh, we'll connect the wiring. All right, so what we've done is we've mounted this, the uh, winch onto the bumper. As I said, the four bolts lined up perfectly. It's almost a universal pattern. We're going to put the front plate on yet, but we're going to show you with the winch in place. We've run the cables underneath the front mount, so this should put the cables below the bottom of the grill. And then you have a rubber flap right here, which is a diverter flap to guide air flow into the radiator. So we pull that away and we can tuck the cables right in behind that. There's a hole already in the battery case where you can run the cables right up through. So here they are. Now the reason they're so long is because most of these winches are universal design. So you need the cables long enough to not only fit vehicles with battery in the front, but also a battery in the rear, which is why the long... And all you need to do with that so you don't have to fuss with putting a new end on it is just simply coil it up and you have enough space alongside the battery to tuck them in. So with that, from this point on basically what you're going to do is follow the instructions that came with the winch that you decided to use on the front of your vehicle. But this gives you an idea of how easy it is to mount one of these up. If you're going to do any major off-roading, these are a huge benefit. You don't know what you're going to run into, you get stuck on a log, caught in some heavy mud. The winch is indispensable. If you're two miles in the woods, you don't want to call a tow truck. Something else, when you read through the instructions on your winch, you're going to find that on some model vehicles, you're going to need to cut away parts of the grill to make clearance for the winch. In this case, we did have to cut away almost three and a half inches up the bottom, across, up again to clear the back of the motor assembly and the uh, electrical connection, and then down the side. Once we're able to do that, we could drop this in place. Now you'll notice like on the case of Discoveries, there are two plastic tabs that drop into rubber grommets on the bottom. Don't worry, you're not losing any additional support because you still have the two side screws holding the side of the grill in place. Plus with the top three screws, this doesn't take any stress or force, so to speak, so basically it can just sit there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's pinned in by the winch. It's still a good setup. So at this point now, we're going to put in our trim panels underneath, get our covers back on, put our side lights in. We'll test our winch to make sure everything's up and working properly and we'll be ready to go. Alright, so what we're going to see right now is we have the winch in place, we got the face plate on, cables pulled out, and with just a, a pin you can install the clip. Now basically as I said, you're going to have all different types of winches and whatnot, but the basic is going to be the same. Follow the directions, it's just a simple hook up to your positive and negative side of your battery. Some are going to, re, uh, some are going to also include a relay pack to show you how to install that right on the positive side of the battery and then once that's it plug in you have your controls you're set to use your winch so when you're ready to mount the winch up on your new steel bumpers you just call any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210 thanks for watching